morning. Welcome to my third career coaching drop-in session. How are you doing? Hello Facebook and hello Instagram. Let me know if you're here and um, yeah, maybe you let me know where you are currently. I'm just uh, waiting a little bit until everybody's joining in here. And then I will start with this session that is very interesting to you today because I will be talking about why Germany is so attractive to immigrants and why you should consider um, working here. Oh, hello! There are some people joining in. <laughs> Hi, Joe. It's very nice to see you. How are you? <laughs> Thank you very much for joining in. Yes, so... Wow, it's February already and I can't believe that yeah, the first couple of weeks of the new decade have already passed. So how is it going with you all and with your job search and with your preparations of finding a job or looking for a job or are you satisfied with your current situ situation? Well, first of all, I would like to clarify um, whether you're right here or <laughs> whether you're wasting your time looking at this video. So my name is Lisa and I am Job Coach Germany. I am from Germany, from uh, a little village near the town called Magdeburg. And Magdeburg is between Berlin and Hanover, right in the middle, so in the northern part of Germany. And I've been working in HR and recruitment for several years and now I would like to share all of my knowledge with you all. This is totally free and feel free to ask me questions that you might have uh, regarding the move to Germany, regarding the application process. So you're right here if you're looking for application advice. That means you need help with your cover letter, your CV, with the preparation of job interviews and then also with regards to the move to Germany, if you're considering to move to Germany. And then you're wasting your time if you think that I will do all of the work for you <laughs> because I'm a coach. That means I will help you and enable you to prepare yourself as best as you can in order to land your dream job. But that only means that I will give you all of the things that you need in order to prepare your documents and to find out the websites that you need to research in order to find out about visas and um, rules and regulations with regards to the move to Germany. Yes, so if you want to have um, support with the application process, you're right here. If you want to have like an agency that is doing everything for you and that will give you the job right at hand, then you need to talk to somebody else. Okay, so I'm um, basically here to help you find a way of where to look for jobs and then also how to find out what the right job is for you personally. And um, yes, and then I can help you along the entire application process. That means writing all of the doc documents and preparing you for the job interview. And then what does it mean to start your job? How does the first week look like? How do you find a flat? And then what kind of um, other forms do you have to sign when you're, for example, moving to Germany and then you want to register your flat and your new address and things like that. These are things that I can help you with and that you can ask me. So, um, maybe you can let me know what your current status is. Yeah, so are you happy with your job? Are you thinking about finding a new job? Where are you looking for jobs if you're considering to find a new job? Also, do I have visitors here that are interested in finding a job in Germany or finding a job abroad? Uh, I have been working um, not only in Germany for several years, but also in, in England, in the UK. And I know that the application processes are different in each country. So this is something that you need to consider and that I can help you with as well. So, and um, because I am an employability coach, um, whatever I'm doing, whether it's um, work-wise or in my leisure time, I am always aware of 
offers that are um, that are striking my eye and things that might help my community and that's why um, I would like to share something with you that I found the last weekend. Last weekend I was very lucky because I got to spend the weekend with my mom at a wellness retreat and um, there I found something very interesting that is also very important for you to know because most of the time applicants are afraid, scared and a little bit worried whether they might land the job or not but there are always two sides right so it's not just that you need to prove to the company that you are a right fit but the company needs to prove to you that you are the, that they are the right fit for you as well right this is something that you need to consider and once you have this switch in your mindset you will know it doesn't really matter what the outcome is if they can prove me that i am right for them then you will be happy in the job right because there is no no point in you applying for a company that might have a wonderful name that is a wonderful brand but then you're bored at your job or you're stressed out and you get a burnout this is something that you should consider before the job interview and also during the job interview yeah so these are also things that you might ask at the end of the job interview. You can ask how does a typical work day look like and things like that. And maybe you can ask whether you can talk to one of your colleagues and whether they like it or not. Yes. So, but regarding the wellness retreat that I had with my mom. So I was at a very nice hotel and what they are doing in order to recruit new talent to their hotel and to their spa department um, I was actually very um, very happy to see that there is a shift happening in how people are being recruited it's not like that the applicants have to prove nowadays all the time what they are doing but as I said the company needs to prove to you um, that they are a good fit to you so I took these two flyers with me they are in German so you probably <laughs> might not be able to read it um, but they are actually uh, offering job recruiting events where you can spend an entire day at their hotel and get to know the different departments, you get a little tour um, and then also they are the, uh, offering like treatments, spa treatments, so that you know, okay, when I work here, this is what we're actually offering the customers. And then they are offering... Um, some relaxed time at the end of the day where you can chill out um, in the spa with cocktails and live music and things like that. Then for the other job event, they are offering a tour again. Then they are offering a workshop where you can uh, learn about your body language and how your voice is um, affecting your um, the, the way you can you're speaking to customers oh Manoj is here hello hello I'm just waving <laughs> thank you very much for joining in it's very nice to see you um, yes so and then you have always uh, time to ask questions regarding the entire processes that are happening in the hotel and then at the end again for another event right they are offering chill out with snacks and um, very nice um, conversations that you can have with the with other colleagues. And this is something that I love. I love to hear about offers that are, yeah, just well thought about like that because it's actually creating a wonderful atmosphere for the applicants and also the the future employer, the potential employer can see how is this person interacting with others. Obviously, it's still an application kind of day. It's um, a recruitment day where you can find out, do I like this workplace or not? Do I like the colleagues or not? Do I like the tasks or do I not like them? And um, it's the first step, basically. But this is a wonderful event to get to know your employer. And it's um, definitely recommendable for for every employee or for every I mean for every potential employer to offer things like that where the where the applicant can actually see what is happening in this house what is happening in this company right so this is something that you should look for yeah this is something that you should definitely consider look for offers that are extensive where they are they are pushing the line they are like going over they are they're over delivering yeah um just 
going the extra mile. It doesn't have to be that the applicant has to go the extra mile all the time. Nowadays, the um, companies have to go the extra mile as well, because actually we have a lack of workers in Germany. This is um, something that I would like to talk to you about today as well. So, but the first thing that I would like to share with you again um, is there are questions that are being asked in on the Facebook uh, page when I'm doing this live here and also on Instagram. and. Um, Regarding the answers, I will put them in the stories, but also I have my, um, I have a private Facebook group that I would like to invite you all to and please join in because there is a place where I will collect all of your questions and I will put in all of my answers and I will also share links with you. I will share uh, reports with you and a lot of data that is interesting to you if you're considering to move to Germany and uh, with regards to your application process. The group on Facebook is called Insights of Job Coach Germany. So basically you can find the group through the community of my official Facebook page Lisa Jens Job Coach Germany and then I have the special group Insights. Um, of Job Coach Germany. Yeah, so you get special infos there and then you can you can also ask questions there during the week and then I will get back to you and uh, answer your questions as soon as possible. And then what is probably most important are the documents that I'm sharing there in the group with you. So you should definitely consider going there. But with regards to the answers for the questions that you're asking here during the lives, I will... Um, try to put them into my story highlights okay so that you know ah okay lisa hasn't forgotten about my um my question and i don't know where to look for um go in the highlights and then it'll be helpful for you so um yes i was talking about the lack of workers that we have in germany and actually um i have been uh, reading a couple of reports. So um, these are reports that are available to everyone who is interested. So they are free to find on the internet. And what I like to look at are um, definitely uh, reports on statista.de, then reports by Glassdoor or Kununu, then um, re a report by Stepstone, reports by LinkedIn and then also a report by the OECD. So, and um, yeah, I will uh, start with the um, Stepstone, um, Stepstone report that I have read and it's basically saying that there are 146,000 workers that are missing in Germany. So this is a huge uh, number right of people that are like we have a huge lack of workers in Germany and um, uh, basically this number is increasing over the years because the jobs are adjusting and um, people are getting older and um, we don't have enough professionals coming uh, like we are not producing <laughs> enough uh, workers that can uh, do the jobs and that's why we are dependent on workers from outside our country and um, it's um, I would like to share the 10 jobs that are in high demand in Germany and that's basically electronics engineers uh, electricians and also software developers you've probably heard of that software developers are in high demand everywhere we need nurses then we need um, sales managers and customer advisors and what is a huge lack in Germany as well are carers for the elderly. Then we also need um, receptionists and obviously personal officers. So people like me, the things that I'm doing. And um, yeah, so the, the staff that is uh, being recruited at the, at the current moment the most are people that are working in software and IT. It's about 62%. Um, then the I looked at a at the recruitment report of LinkedIn and they analyzed something that is very interesting as well because they analyzed different cities and whether the cities um, uh, can meet the applicants. So basically, in the cities they have jobs and they are recruiting for people. They are recruiting people and. Um, 
In Düsseldorf and Köln, for example, there are um, three quarters of the, the jobs they are offering, they can meet with applicants. But then in, in Frankfurt, for example, it's only 38%. That means there is a huge lack of applicants already. Yeah. And then um, also that is um, in Berlin and in Munich, we have 45% each. So that means still more than half of the the positions that they are searching applicants for, they don't even get the applicants for those positions, right? And that, that is, that's really a huge problem. And um, uh, Hamburg, for example, has um, thirty-eight percent of their positions that are being covered by applicants, but then still. Um, 62 percent are missing right so this is something that you need to consider maybe you can let me know in the comments whether you already have a favorite city that you would like to work in maybe you can start with a favorite um, country that you would like to work in and then you can tell me whether you have a, a preference with regards to the city that you would like to work in so right now from the recruitment point of view i would recommend you to apply in hamburg and in frankfurt because these are the cities that have the lowest rates of applicants with regards to open positions according to the linkedin recruitment report so Oh, and the, the reports are from 2019, just to let you know. And these reports will be shared in my Facebook group as well. So um, stay tuned there, obviously. And um, yes, let's have a look at um, some other interesting facts that might be a pull factor for you. So that are attractive for you, why you should consider to go to Germany. That's first of all obviously a good economic situation and um, <sighs> comparing 2019 and 2020 with the years before we have an increasing number of vacancies with regards to jobs so this is something that is helpful for everybody from outside the country coming into Germany and wanting to work here then um, we have an um, increased need for skilled workers obviously and we ha we also have a very low unemployment rate of about five percent please take a look on statista for example and find out whether you um where the uh, unemployment rates are as low as in germany so this is a very good number and um also um, according to the oecd um, employability report it says that Germany has one of the most liberal immigra immigration systems that means it's easier for you to access the country you and maybe you have already researched a couple of visas how you can get here I mean if you are in the EU it's e um, and whether when you are from the EU from a country in within the EU it's probably easier for you to find a job here because you don't need a visa but if you are from outside the EU there are also a lot of yeah, possibilities to find a job in Germany and find an, um, a visa accordingly. Also, the company is most likely to help you with a visa. So this is something that you don't have to do on your own. Okay, then, um, obviously, the health insurance system in Germany is very good. Then the education system in Germany is very good. I don't say it's the optimum, <laughs> but it's it's a lot better than uh, com in comparison with other com uh, countries, right? So maybe I can tell you um, a difference in because I have worked in England and in Germany. So in, in Germany, you pay um, you pay your health insurance, um, it, and it's a must. So there is no way around the health insurance. You have to pay for it, and it's a high amount that you're paying. But um, you can go to the doctor and then you get your, your medicine for some certain medicine um, and for certain prescriptions you get, you only have to pay five euros for certain um, prescriptions. You don't have to pay anything. Some you have to pay in full. Um, and then there are, when you go to the hospital, you basically just give your health insurance card and then everything's fine. And your they will tell you that um, like your, your health insurance company is taking care of the costs and um, it depends obviously if you want to have plastic surgery this is something else obviously you've heard about 
that. But when I was working in England, I didn't have to pay extra um, for the health insurance. So um, it was part of my salary. So they took off um, the took off the 20% taxes in England and then from the 20% taxes they paid the national health insurance right NHS and um, then you could go to the hospital and everybody was covered as well but comparing hospitals in England and uh, uh, hospitals in Germany there's a huge difference in England it was like ramped it was packed it was full of people there were people on the like in the hallways and this is something that i don't see in germany you can also um have um uh, yeah you can have like there are rooms there are two people in the room then four people in a room or six people in a room but most of the time it's two or four and um, there are no people in the hallway <laughs> that are being uh, taken care of. Then uh, one of my former colleagues in England, he had his um, appendix taken out. And on the same day of the surgery, he had to leave the hospital because they didn't have the capacity to keep him there. And in Germany, this wouldn't happen. Yeah, so if you get your appendix taken out, you will probably stay in the hospital for three and uh, at least three until five days. So this is something that is different in the health insurance that I have already experienced. Maybe you have something else that you can share with us within the group, within the comments. Feel free to, to let me know because this is also something that you need to consider. Even though if you're a young person and you think, okay, I don't get sick, this is still something you need to consider. For example, if you think about um, moving to Germany and you want to um, live here and you want to build a life here, then this is something in the long run that will affect you and that will be very helpful for you to know. Okay, so let's take a look at the, um, again, at the Stepstone report um, and the um, different um, districts in Germany where you can, um, where there are the highest salaries. So this is something that the Stepstone um, salary report tells you. Yeah, so it tells you the districts, it tells you the departments where you earn the most money. And um, for now, um, the highest is, um, one, of, one of the highest is in Hamburg, which is good, which is about 60,700 euros per year. Um, and then the lowest, let's have a look, the lowest is in Mecklenburg-Vorpommern. <laughs> so um, it's also in the northern part and this is where you earn the least, basically. Then let's have a look at um, the cities. So the salary according to cities. Um, the most you earn in Munich with 70,625 euros and Hello, there are more people joining in. I'm just waving. Hello. And then also Stuttgart uh, with 68,000 euros that you will earn per year. And then um, obviously um, something like um, Cologne is roughly at 63,000 and Mannheim is also almost the same. So the best um, two cities are Munich and Stuttgart. This is where you earn the most. Um, oh yeah, and obviously um, on the on the very very top is uh, Frankfurt, but you need to be careful. In Germany, there are two Frankfurts. <laughs> uh, we have Frankfurt Oder and Frankfurt or Frankfurt am Main. And Frankfurt am Main, that is the city where you earn around seventy three thousand, depending on the department, obviously as well where you're working in. But this is like the highest. This is the top of all. And then something else, let's have a look at the um, the industries that you can work in. So the industry where you earn the most is, um, are, is the banking industry, right? So banks, which makes sense because Frankfurt am Main is like the, the it's like the hotspot for banks. Um, this is where um, the stock market exchange um, is very popular and all of the banks are working there and a lot of people that are working in Frankfurt are typically working in at some sort of bank or in the financial industry. And um, at a bank you can earn up to 70,800 euros per year. And um, then the second industry that is very um, attractive is the pharma industry. Um, then the third one, which is 
clear and that you've probably heard of is the automotive industry and um, the fourth is um, in chemistry and oil industry and then the fifth is insurances so these are the five top industries that are uh, offering uh, the most money per year all right and then um uh, something that I mentioned earlier was um, where the reports by Kununu and Glassdoor, these are websites that I normally check to find out whether a company has a good reputation or not. Um, employees and former employees and customers and also, um, yeah, um, basically people that are working in the company um, can uh, give a an evaluation of how their job is and whether they're earning enough money and whether they're satisfied or not. And these Kununu and Glassdoor websites always tell you um, the bad things as well. Yeah. So if somebody is unsatisfied or dissatisfied, then um, they will write it in the comments there. And um, they will also tell you what is very good about the company. And according to the Kununu ranking of 2019, the top employer was SAP. Uh, the second top was Google Germany and the third one was BMW. Okay, and obviously if you have a look at the Kununu site, you will see the others. Then the Glassdoor Award also said that SAP is on top. So if you're working for SAP, you can be very happy because it <laughs> seems to be a very good employer. And actually, I have to admit, I have worked with SAP before as well. And I can um, assure you, it's a very nice place to work and they are very relaxed as well. And this is something that I was always looking forward to. Then the Glassdoor Award 2019 on second place is Infineon. And the third one is Robert Bosch. So these are basically very good employers and um, a lot of people are interested and happy to work there. And um, maybe you want to find out more about them and then you can find, like, look, look for those companies on the, on the internet and maybe you find something that is interesting to you as well. Okay, so let's um, talk about the wrap up for today. Um, First of all, I showed you a little um, information about a hotel that I um, that I visited and where I found a very nice introduction of recruitment events. This is something that you should look for: recruitment events that are offering like special special events, special occasions, special arrangements. Um, then uh, the next one, I was talking about my private Facebook group Insights of Job Coach Germany, where I will be sharing all of the reports that I've been talking about today with you. Uh, so feel free to join there. Um, and then the last part was basically why you should consider going to Germany and work here. And this is basically because we have a huge lack of employees. We have a huge lack of workers, especially skilled workers. And um, the, um, yeah, I told you about the departments where we're looking for people and the industries. And then I also shared with you um, what kind of uh, salary you can expect in the different districts of Germany, in the different cities in Germany and in the different uh, industries. So if there are any questions that you might have, feel free to leave it in the comments and um, I will get back to you with my answers in the, um, in the story highlights. And then I wish you a wonderful start into the new week and I will hopefully see you next week on Monday at 10 a.m. Bye! Thank you very much for joining in!